What's up everyone? Today we have Rapidash at the patron's behest. Fans of the original Indigo League series will of course remember the iconic episode where Ash entered some race and rode a Ponyta that evolved at the very last second to cross the finish line and also defeating Gary's Dodrio. Generation 1 players will also recall how the president of the Pokemon fan club talked their head off about his own cute cuddly Rapidash. But as usual, today we'll be looking into how Rapidash performed in the competitive scene. So once again, we ask, how good was Rapidash actually? And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. All right, in red, blue, and yellow, Rapidash in all its fiery glory, unfortunately can't keep up at all in the normal and psychic infested RBY metagame. Fire typing does nothing defensively, not even resisting ice in the first generation, and having a stab move to scare Exeggutor doesn't mean much when you can't switch into its psychic. As a partial trapper and potential cleaner with fire spin and agility, it is completely outclassed by Moltres, which is far stronger and bulkier thanks to its superior HP, defense, and special, allowing Moltres Moltres to actually scare the opposing team, while Rapidash just doesn't. This means Rapidash is relegated to underused, but unfortunately, it's not even good there. What the tier loses in Chansey-like unbreakability, it makes up for with attacks that absolutely decimate Rapidash at every quarter. And Rapidash loses quite hard to staples like Hypno and Tentacruel, among other things. So yeah, unfortunately, in its debut generation, life is pretty rough for Rapidash. Now on to Gen 2, with leftovers and items in general being introduced, Snorlax gaining massive special defense, and the influx of other problems like Raikou, Suicune, and Tyranitar, Rapidash was of course nowhere to be seen in second generation OU, because once again, better fire types than it existed, like Charizard, Houndoom, and Moltres, and they also had their problems. In UU and NU, however, it did have somewhat of a niche. In UU, it was on the lower end of usage, which is how it ended up NU in the first place, and even then it was still kind of a stretch, but it was quite a fine Pokemon at least in NU. In fact, it was one of the tier's better options, even though it functioned basically the same in both tiers. It was gifted Hypnosis in the generational shift, and despite Hypnosis's lower accuracy, Rapidash's high speed meant that it usually got two shots at pulling it off. In the lower tiers, grass types are quite common, so Rapidash has plenty of opportunity to make something happen. The payoff is potentially quite high, since GSC sleep lasts a whopping one to six turns. However, this was more for the benefit of Rapidash Rapidash's teammates than Rapidash itself, as its offenses were not exactly amazing, but it got the job done just well enough to exert some sort of legitimate pressure upon the opponent, so at least it wasn't like they could just do whatever they wanted, especially since Rapidash can have hidden power grass coverage for rock types like Graveler and waters like Golduck. Make no mistake though, Hypnosis was primarily to make monsters like Primate, Polyrath, and Kingler have an easier time getting on the field to cause havoc. Even if there was a rest talk user on the other team to absorb the Hypnosis, it was nice to have the option to at least threaten to shut something else down, and hitting a rest talk user wasn't bad. The threat was Rapidash being unable to break through them itself, but there was no guarantee they'd get good sleep talks versus Rapidash's offensive teammates, and that could be game breaking. So Rapidash did improve a little in the lower tiers of Gen 2. Now on to Gen 3. Rapidash, once again, had no hope for OU. With things like Sandstream, Tyranitar, three layers of spikes, Arena Trap, Dugtrio, the ever-pleasant Blissey, a plethora of great bulky waters, and miscellaneous threats like Salamence, Zapdos, and Aerodactyl. Yeah, you get the idea. All of those things just crush it. However, Rapidash did become a bonafide UU Pokemon because the third generation gifted Rapidash Baton Pass. This allowed it to make use of the free turns generated by Hypnosis, passing substitutes and agilities to its already Already scary offensive teammates. This elevated Pokemon like Kangaskhan and Scyther to new heights of terror as the speed boost or the protection of a substitute circumvented most conventional methods of dealing with them and often resulted in the opponent losing much more of their team than they would prefer, sometimes even resulting in an outright sweep. It was usually the fastest Pokemon in any given Yu Yu match, allowing it plenty of opportunity to sleep and safely pass a substitute. Now, it wasn't as popular as the tier staples, but it was one of the best Pokemon at helping those staples become even more powerful. So overall, Rapidash improved a little more in Gen 3, becoming a perfectly decent UU Pokemon. 
in DPP, Power Creep, including Stealth Rock, meant Rapidash was, I mean, you probably already know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, no one ever thought about it for OU. But it also had the most brutal competition possible down in UU, where Arcanine had also dropped to. And it was pretty much the perfect Pokemon for that tier. Whereas Rapidash had to rely on Baton Pass gimmicks, and the return for using Rapidash on your team didn't come close to outweighing how dead weight it was, both offensively and defensively. As opposed to Arcanine, which did a million and a half things, did them consistently consistently and did them well thanks to Intimidate, better offensive stats, and priority. Rapidash dropped to NU as a result. But wouldn't you know it, there was another amazing fire type ruling the roost down there, that being Charizard. However, Rapidash was at least better down here. It had Flash Fire to soak up Charizard's big hits, a fantastic speed tier to outspeed both Zard and Jinx, the two scariest offensive Pokemon in the tier, and a massively powerful Megahorn to destroy the big fat Slow King that blanked most other fire types. Its baton pass tactics were generally useful as well thanks to its tremendous speed. It was NU once more, but at least Rapidash found use somewhere. All right, black and white, we got weather, dragons, power creep, you already know the drill. Now, the idea of Rapidash and OU seemed laughable. I mean, yeah, it was. But one brave user a long time ago once used a sun team with what was dubbed Mixed Weather Killer Rapidash, utilizing Rapidash's newfound access to Wild Charge and Low Kick to bait in and destroy Politoed and Tyranitar so its partner Ninetales' drought went uncontested. But make no mistake, this was a gimmicks gimmick, a terrible Pokemon that had no impact on anything other than the mid low ladder, maybe. But the fact that even something like Rapidash was used at all was a testament to the lengths people went through to win the weather war. Anyway, other than that, Rapidash was basically the worst. It fell through UU, dropped through the new RU, and found itself barely existing within NU. It was walled at every corner by a Lomomola and Regirock, despite packing super effective moves, and in general found itself unable to dish out much meaningful damage to generally bulky Pokemon like Masharna to the extent of making it a favorable trade. In in addition to not being able to switch into anything due to its meager bulk making even the few things it does resist hit way too hard. Especially combined with Stealth Rock in a tier where it's notoriously difficult to pull off Rapid Spin. Not that the benefits of using Rapidash were such that it was worth going to the trouble of fitting Spin anyway. This in addition to recoil from all of Life Orb and Flare Blitz and Wild Charge meant Rapidash was pretty much instantly dead and it wasn't exactly an effective Kamikaze because it just wasn't strong enough so it's not like it would have opened up a particularly notable gap within the opposing team in its wake. Unfortunately, Rapidash was generally weak, frail, and terrible. And that's why it was never used, even in never used, even after Charizard was banned. It was outclassed by Simiseer of all things. Hypnosis was nice if it landed thanks to black and white sleep mechanics, but it wasn't worth the risk of both 60% accuracy and having to use Rapidash for it. Again, it's unfortunate, but that's just how it goes in the unforgiving competitive metagame. Generation 6 killed permanent weather and brought in Megas, and maybe if Rapidash had received one, we'd have one of those episodes where you basically wait until the Pokemon receives a Mega, and then we start really talking about it, again. But I guess Rapidash isn't quite enough of a fan favorite for that, and so it languished in obscurity, falling ever further down the tiering rung. All of UU, RU, and NU had Megas, and all of those had power levels well above Rapidash's pay grade, whereas where Rapidash ended up, PU, did not have any. And at least here it was actually quite good. It gained even more coverage and drill run, which alongside its speed and flash fire turned it into an amazing Ninetales counter, as well as smacking the common golem. Generally, it was able to hit the tier quite hard. Defog helped with Stealth Rock, and it could handle one or two of the opposing attacks that generally flew around. It did need to predict well though, since while it two hit KO'd its checks, it generally didn't hit them for enough damage to where if they switched into Flare Blitz, they'd be in KO range. For example, Wild Charge against Politoed or Mega Horde against Grumpig. Rapidash was generally dealt with by being out offense by speedsters like Floatzel and Perugly, but they weren't exactly switching in and Rapidash still got the jump on much of the tier, meaning it'd be grabbing KOs before being forced out by these faster Pokemon. It was effective at blowing massive holes in all sorts of opposing teams, ranging from offense to defense, and as such was one of the better PU Pokemon. Despite being given the power boost it had craved with the new Z moves, Generation 7 Rapidash was unable to repeat its PU success. Of course, the higher 
their tears were a dream a million miles away by now, but it felt especially cruel to have this taken away by Combuskin, who was a million times better in absolutely every way, thanks to no stealth rock weakness, swords dance, fighting stab, and speed boost. Unfortunately, there's not much more to it than that, and that is why Rapidash finally received the lowest dishonor for a fully evolved Pokemon. It is officially untiered and not recommended for use in any tier. You hate to see it, but this horse is officially entirely in the back. Also, you may be wondering, we haven't talked about VGC at all for Rapidash, and yeah, we could not find anything, like literally nothing. Not even someone trying it out in early rounds, just nothing. If I'm wrong, let me know, but I, I really couldn't. I'm sorry. And this is probably because it's outclassed by the myriad of fire types with either unique abilities, more power, or who are bulkier. And it's weak to common spread moves like Rock Slide and Earthquake, of course. So yeah, I don't really think I have to explain why it's bad in VGC. And that's it. So how good was Rapidash actually? Sadly, not very. It's one of those Pokemon where you really have to rack your brains to find a legitimate niche for it, even in the lower tiers. And it's not worth actually bringing to a halfway important game. It's a consequence of being a pure fire type without any particularly interesting tools to make up for it. And admittingly with barely any upgrades throughout the generation. So unfortunately, the competitive scene was not a race Rapidash could win. Thanks for watching everyone. Thank you so much to the patrons for continued support of our video and for voting for this Pokemon. It really means a lot to me. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comment section, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Rapidash? How would you improve it? Like, what would you give it to make it better? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.